Speaking about driving around the city, it appears that congestion pricing is fast approaching for the city. While the tolls are not set to take effect until next spring, at the earliest the infrastructure, well, that's already in place in many parts of the city. At the same time, several areas are planning for changes to the way drivers will enter Manhattan. So last month, New York Congressman Richie Torres announced plans for a new fast charging station hub in the Bronx for electric vehicles. It's one of several investments the Bronx has made as the city moves towards congestion pricing. Guess who's here? Congressman Richie Torres. Nice to have you back on Good Day. Always an honor to be here. So, so I mean, can you believe how fast the MTA is working <laughs> with the, getting those stanchions, those toll stanchions? And we're, not, like, we're like a year and a half away from that. Uh, I guess the MTA can't be a well-oiled machine when it chooses to be, but uh, the stakes are high. Look, you know, congestion pricing, for all its controversy, will radically reduce air pollution. It will radically reduce greenhouse gas emissions in the service of combating climate change. But the most important piece is creating a funding stream for the MTA so that we can make $15 billion worth of capital improvements. You know, public transit is the lifeblood of our city. And our crumbling infrastructure, including our public transit system, is an international embarrassment. But at what cost? I mean, I know you were considering it. I know yeah. you've been on both sides of the issue. And almost a year ago to the day, you were concerned about yeah. this. You were concerned for your district in the Bronx because you said it was going to bring a lot of trucks in, yeah. not good for the environment, not good for the people who live there. What changed your mind? So I originally had concerns about the congestion pricing plan because the environmental assessment indicated there would be a diversion of diesel truck traffic to the Cross Bronx Expressway in the South Bronx. And I made it crystal clear that I'm not going to allow the Bronx to be a dumping ground for Manhattan's diesel truck traffic. The governor heard those concerns, and to her credit, she committed to $155 million in investments. In the Bronx. To specifically for the Bronx to address public health needs and environmental needs. But it's almost like they're creating the problem and then they're going to solve it with the money they gave I, I you. I think the benefits of the investments will far exceed the cost. So it's $35 million for clean trucks, $20 million for EV charging infrastructure, $20 million for a Bronx asthma clinic, $15 million to replace the dirtiest fossil fuel trucks in the Hunts Point Terminal Market, which will reduce particulate matter pollution by 90%, which means lower rates of asthma, lower rates of asthma hospitalization. So I do believe it's going to be a breakthrough for the public health of the Bronx. But is it really in the big picture of things? Because when you look at EV cars, it's less than 1% of cars that are registered yeah. in New York City. Manhattan having the most, Bronx having probably more towards the least end of things. So is that really the best trade-off that you can get when terms of when you're saying this was going to be bad for us, but here's a trade-off? I mean, could you have gotten something more? Well, I think there's going to be rapid growth in the EV market. You know, mm -hmm. in order to have an electric vehicle, you need EV charging infrastructure. And the borough president and I just joined a company known as Revel to announce the largest EV infrastructure in the history of the Bronx. And unlike most EV chargers, which could take 8 to 10 hours to charge an electric vehicle, these chargers are ultra fast, 8 to 10 minutes. It's going to be the electric equivalent of a gas station. Just like it takes a few minutes to fill your pump, it should take a few minutes to charge your electric vehicle. I think that's the wave of the future. When you talk to people in your district, and which most people are opposed to congestion pricing, that's what we hear time and time again. What do they say to you? Look, no one, I think, uh, no one wants to pay the cost of congestion pricing. Yeah. I mean, no one wants to pay the cost of anything, right? But the, the, the listen, everything's pretty high as it is. It, and the cost of living <laughs> is crushing. Right. But the MTA is the lifeblood of our city. And it's easy for politicians to be critics of congestion pricing and to demagogue the issue. It's much harder to solve the problem. And so in the absence of congestion pricing, what's the alternate strategy for generating the $15 billion in capital there, improvements I mean, that the MTA needs? But there has to be an alternative strategy when politicians are elected to do the will of the people, and the people don't want it. The critics are putting forward no alternative. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem is I think a lot of people don't trust the MTA. They think it's a big failed bureaucracy where the money goes in this abyss and you never see it again. Well, keep in mind that the revenues from congestion pricing will go not toward operations but toward capital and people can see capital improvements with their own eyes. 